Each moment provides such an incredible opportunity. We can look at our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and experiences, what we call data streams, and invest all of our energy into them. Drain all of the energy into trying to rearrange them, improve them, self-help them, purify them, whatever you want to call it. And you see how the focus goes all to oneself, what we think and feel and trying to make sense of it. And this is investment that its result is misery. Option one, misery perpetuating sadness, perpetuating ups and downs. And that's a choice that many of us just learn and grow from being this open, pure baby with no nothing to hold on to, just pure loveliness and, and cuddles and kisses to suddenly being this entity that constantly needs to think, think, think and analyze and b basically self-oppress ourselves uh, as a matter of choice. And then the other option is really to see that each moment provides an incredible opportunity where we can invest our energy and time each moment in complete empowerment, in complete freedom, perceptual openness, the freedom to be of benefit, to recognize that everything about us is naturally perfect exactly as it is with nothing that needs to change. So when these two options are presented to us, uh, we have a choice there because we can see, oh, oh, the option of natural perfection, it sounds too good, I better stay with the misery. Why? Because I know it, because uh, most of the people around me do it, because um, I'm an expert in that. And, and so that's one option. And the other option is to really open up to the possibility, especially if it's new to you, to the possibility that yes, all of our thoughts, emotions, and sensations, all of our data streams are nothing but pure benefit. They are not some kind of a, a different entity that comes to attack our state of well-being, our state of calm, and that's how I treated myself before. And I know that many people who are looking for uh, true stability and peace and, and so forth, uh, assuming that those appearances, the data streams, that somehow they are enemies that come to attack us and, and rob us from our happiness and joy and calm. Right, Because you are in the beautiful setting, you're supposed to have only positive data streams, you're supposed to love everyone, and suddenly you receive a WhatsApp message from the tax office in your country, or you receive a message from your mom that says that the bank just called and they say you are, you're in a minus and the numbers are red, and like, wait, 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 how can this work together with needing to feel happy all of the time? So we are in constant struggle. And we're in constant um, striving that leads to nowhere, the striving to try and get the better appearances, the, the better data streams. And for sure I was caught up in this loop and everything that I learned along the way really pointed to that. Yes, there is a beautiful opportunity somewhere. You're not there right now. And in order to get there, you need to really work hard on yourself. And maybe if you effort enough for thousands of years, maybe you'll reach to this golden place called true happiness. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a good deal to me, but I didn't know anything else. So I thought, okay, I don't want to stay in the misery. So at least I will follow something that tells me that there is an opportunity and maybe if I'll be really, really lucky, I'll get there and celebrate with uh, those golden people. And then Balance View came uh, to my life in, in, a, in a time where I was really fed up, actually. I, I wanted to give up on seeking for this uh, happiness and, uh, in, a, in a genuine way. And um, it just clarified all of this confusion. It really clarified all of my confusion about what is the nature of reality, first of all, how can I access it in every moment, not just in like high, out of this world, special orgasmic states of bliss, but in everyday life. When I get the WhatsApp message from the person I don't want to get the WhatsApp message from, when someone gives me the looks that I don't want to receive, tax office, politics, should I add more things? Uh, <laughs> things, <laughs> everyday life basically. 
which is comprised of positive, negative, and neutral data streams, right? <coughs> I've never met someone who always, who's been able to only keep positive data streams in place. Yet I met many people who are trying and failing. Not, a not one single person who, who was able to keep that, but everyone is trying. Doesn't make sense. Again, you see the logic is completely incorrect. Where we hear, yeah, positive thinking and think positive, that's how you'll be happy. Where is the proof of that? <laughs> Watch the news and see if it works. <laughs> it leads the world. This and other means of emphasizing our data streams leads the world to complete chaos. So we have to free ourselves from that burden and everything that we learned. And this is what's happening here in a very natural way, the nature of mind being introduced to that, what's looking, what's listening. Whether you have concepts about it and you think you know it already and it's just a different title, s remain open. Allow yourself to recognize it in your own direct experience. Stop thinking for a moment. What remains? Alertness, openness, cognizance, the power to know. This is open intelligence. Your open intelligence, vast like clear sky, and within that vast openness, there are data streams. These data streams are the liveliness and potency of open intelligence. And when we take, and they're inseparable from that, like the color blue is inseparable from the sky, not too. Like the breeze that we feel right now touching and brushing our skin is inseparable from air. Not two separate things that we can put in different boxes and say, okay, now I can manage. Not at all. That's true unity. And when we hear concepts like emptiness, emptiness is not a feeling of boredom and everything is equal in a sense of like, oh, oh my God, I don't, nothing is exciting. True understanding of emptiness, and like Candy spoke in the talk, is really to see this inseparability, that everything is in inseparable from open intelligence, empty of a... Of a something else of a different quality everything is saturated by open intelligence like sunlight saturating this space that we are sitting right now <coughs> and that's that's you know especially with those concepts that can be very confusing it's best to take it back to simplicity and just rest with whatever comes up for sure for me i don't see it and i don't experience it also not in the community of um people who are practicing open intelligence that it's some kind of a empty state and I've tried to be in an empty state before what did it mean not having thoughts so I walked like innocently in the wi uh, streets of Rishikesh and Laxmanjula and I thought whoa I'm empty I'm empty I don't have any thought I don't have any thought look at me Rishikesh Woohoo! <laughs> I'm like the sadhus and all the great beings look at me I don't have any thought and I didn't recognize that saying to myself I don't have any thought is just another thought <laughs> so it was like oh <laughs> okay let's be humble <laughs> and let's remain open and that's where short moments are really great because it's a constant reset button we build the world of reification the text the this the that my friends the intellectuals the artists what would they say the the just relax, take a short moment and see how everything is nourished completely already as it is. The teaching is for people who really want it above all else. Everyone needs it, for sure. <laughs> you know, not like being like some kind of, the people of the world, listen, you all need to convert to open intelligence. It's really not the point. But I have many wonderful friends and family members that I wish for them from all my heart that they will be open for this teaching. But at this point, they are not. And I will not base my practice, my openness, my uh, involvement on, on their opinion. That will be completely fruitless and will keep me chained to the investment in misery. Yet what I can see that by taking short moments and actually relying on open intelligence, I'm able to be a better son, a better family member, brother, 
grandson, all the other titles that I collected along the way, a better friend, because I really understand people and where, where they're coming from, because I take it back to my own experience. You see, it's, that's where true benefit is found. Not thinking about it, but instinctively recognizing complete perceptual openness in all experiences. Not just in Goa, on s in the sunset, where everyone thinks you are the greatest, but when you wake up in the morning and you don't want to wake up. When you have enough emails in your inbox to make you depressed. Where everyone is asking you really annoying questions that you don't want to answer and you just want to be in the room. You know, this is where we want to recognize the, na the true potency and liveliness of open intelligence and the freedom that is found right there. And in Balanced View, what makes the difference is really unerring teaching, unerring instructions, and the 12 empowerments is really the step for those who are open and ready to make this shift from a life that is based on the boot camp of emphasizing our thoughts and emotions and thinking that we are reaching there, yet being stuck in a hamster wheel of descriptions and getting exhausted along the way. And those who want to make the shift to a life that is really based on the responsiveness of open intelligence, that's where the 12 empowerments come in, which is the foundational training of Balanced View. And for me, it really shifted my life completely. I came with all of these concepts about myself, what do I know, what did I collect in all of these years, and suddenly just reading the text, answering questions, being with the community, being with the trainers, over 12 days I could see, okay, life is much more interesting, more beneficial, more exciting, and far more simpler than I thought they were. In 12 days, that's what happened to me, by being open to receive this incredible teaching that unlocks all of these treasures that are available to human beings. And yes, it requires openness, and it requires the commitment to really see ourselves as we really are and contribute all of this dynamic energy to the benefit of everyone. It's not like a self-help <coughs> project of broken people. It's something that is for the benefit of all, where the focus shifts, and we are included in the benefit of all by the way, but it's something that shifts completely the perspective. So during the 12 empowerments I suddenly realized somewhere ar around empowerment 4 Wow, my seeking has ended. The spiritual seeking, the intellectual seeking, the efforting and all of that, it just ended. I, I'm not going to waste my life anymore because I know what I can rely on. And I have all of the support, specific, customized support to make it obvious from now on to the rest of my life. Gaining confidence in that in short moments, repeated many times, until this instinctive recognition becomes obvious at all times. And with that, all of the richness of the qualities of open intelligence, all of the benefits just become more and more obvious. So again, take it back to your own experience. Which option do you choose? The familiar one that leads to the familiar place or one that might be unknown yet to you, yet holds great benefit and many people are proving that.